Welcome agents to a quick tutorial on how to write up offer to purchase agreements in Massachusetts. Uh, we'll dive right into it. So this is an offer to purchase agreement. I'm on the computer here, as you can see. I'm gonna zoom in on uh, the details. This is like a page and a half offer. It's a real simple contract. So when you get a buyer, they wanna put an offer in. Obviously, you gotta get them pre-approved for a mortgage. That's the first thing. Before you even start showing them properties, make sure they're pre-approved. Know what they're gonna put for a down payment, et cetera, et cetera. Find out if they want to do a home inspection. A lot of buyers today are waiving home inspection. You will get the first time home buyer occasionally that wants to do a home inspection, but you got to make them aware that if they're doing a home inspection, it's going to weaken their offer and they're probably going to have a very difficult time getting into a property, especially with the way this market is today. It's very competitive. There's a lot of cash buyers out there. There's a lot of uh, other buyers doing financing. They're waiving inspection. So, you know, if the property looks good, try and try and get them to waive the home inspection. Make them aware that uh, you know where where to be held harmless in case any unforeseen um, major issues arise after the after the purchase. Um, so anyway, we'll jump right in. So this is the offer to purchase agreement. So I have it. Already, I have this already filled out. So here you have the buyer's first and last name. You just put that in, and this is already pre-printed up. You have the owner on record. That's the seller, and then you just fill in. Um, the property address, in this case, it's 474 Revere Beach Boulevard, Unit 804, Revere Mass, zip code. Um, you go down here, you want to put the, the registry of deeds, like what county. So this, in this case, it's Suffolk County. Um, book and page number, you can look up on MLS. When you show the property, there should be a book and page number there. All too often, you'll see, it'll say book zero, page zero. So if that's the case, just put that there. Um, so here is the offer price is, and in this case, the buyer's offering $490,000. Um, the next line is a deposit. So the buyer has to give a deposit when they put an offer in. Now, typically you don't collect this deposit. Uh, you know, when you present the offer, you get it once the offer is accepted, and then you get the deposit over to the seller's broker. They're gonna put it in escrow. And in this case, the first deposit checks $1,000 if the offer is accepted. And it's made out to Cameron, Cameron Real Estate. Um, so typically it's a thousand dollars for the first deposit with this offer to purchase. Okay. Then the next line goes over the purchase and sale agreement. And when the purchase and sale agreement is done, which is usually a week to a week and a half later, um, you're going to put a date in there. So in this case, the date week, week and a half later is September 19th, 2024. Now this $20,000 represents the second deposit that the buyer is going to give to Cameron, in this case, Cameron Real Estate, for a second deposit. The, um, the $20,000 typically uh, will be a bank check. Um, sometimes they will accept a personal check, but most often they do want a bank check, okay? And that needs to be made out to Cameron. Now that $20,000 deposit is given once the purchase and sale agreement is fully signed by the buyer and seller. And what will happen is the purchase and sale agreement will be drafted by the attorney. So you always want to refer an attorney over uh, to the seller or buyer, you know, whoever you're working with to immediately conduct the purchase and sale. This line down here, 469, 469,000, that represents the balance that's left over, which will be due at the closing. So 469,000, if you add up 20 and add up one, it adds up to 490, okay? Okay. Um, We'll go to deposits. This is this is a, a paragraph about deposits. It basically just states that all deposits will be held by the uh, brokerage representing the seller. If cold feet happens at any time, the deposits are, are, are subject to forfeiture. Um, and there there is a protection clause and all that stuff. So you can always read that. But typically, I mean, 15 years in the business, I've never had a buyer really get cold feet. Um, if they find something that they don't like, uh, you know, everything's subject to, to review and approval. In this case, we have a condo. So a condo, um, you want to put language, and I'll get to that in, in a little bit, uh, you'll, you want to put language in stating that a uh, buyer is subject to review and approval of condo documents, which means meeting minutes, all that stuff. So you want to know what your buyer is getting into. If there's a big assessment coming down, you want to know that. And the, sellers, the seller is supposed to provide all this to the buyer within a, within a reasonable uh, time frame. Paragraph four, conditions of acceptance. This is a deadline for how long the offer is good for. So if you're presenting an offer, typically you're going to want to put a 24 hour deadline unless in the MLS disclosures, it states, you know, there's, you know, we're going to collect offers, um, you know, all deadline, you know, offers due by Monday, 6 PM. So a lot of times with the way the market is, um, you know, sellers agents will, will represent that, 
you know, we're going to collect offers and we're going to make the offer deadline uh, to, uh, till Monday at 6 p.m., which in that case, you probably want to put Monday at 10 p.m. for a deadline or even Tuesday at 12 p.m. to give the seller time to think about it. Um, if, the, if your buyer really wants the property, you've got to make them, and it's a new property, you've got to make them aware that there's a lot of interest in it, which there probably is, and they're going to have to put their highest and best offer in. So keep that in mind because, you know, that's going to be the game changer in terms of getting offers accepted and getting offers not accepted. Um, purchase and sale agreement. This just pretty much um, goes over exactly what we have up here. 919. 919. That's the purchase and sale agreement. Okay, so that's when it's going to get signed by. Um, and the attorneys will work on that agreement. That's the best part. The attorneys work on this agreement. Agents do not have to do this. The only thing you have to do as an agent is, is draft this offer, which is a legally binding contract once it's signed by both buyer and seller. Okay. Paragraph six, inspection contingency. Um, in this case, the buyer waived inspection, so I crossed out inspection. I also put buyer will purchase an as-is condition. Financing contingency is important. So if you have a buyer that's putting 20% down, which in this case, the buyer is putting 20% down. Uh, actually, he's putting a little bit more than 20% down. I forget what it was. It might have been 25%. Um, what you want to do is take the 25% of the purchase price or 20% or whatever it is and subtract that from the from the offer price, which in this case is 490, I believe this buyer was putting 25% down. So long story short, the financing amount is $367,500. And then this paragraph right here, this date is for a loan commitment. Now it typically takes about 35 days, 40 days to get a loan commitment from the bank. So you wanna date this, you wanna date this outwards, okay? Um, Actually, this is this is a uh, this is a typo. This this should have been ten eighteen. I'm gonna change that right now. That should have been ten eighteen two thousand twenty four, not nine eighteen. So that was a typo. Um, this date right here refers to um, the loan application, like when the buyer has to put the loan application in. So in this case, I put nine sixteen. He's gonna put the loan application in immediately. Um, so you got to get your dates right. That's important. The purchase and sale date, the offer acceptance date, the deadline for the offer. You got to get all that stuff in there. Closing is, and so all you have to do is put the closing date in. In this case, it's 10-23-2024. And this was a 10, this was a 10 a.m. closing. Now this is always subject to change. These dates are subject to change, but you want to put these dates in to let the, to let the seller know um, that your buyer means business and he's got deadlines that him and his lender have to meet, and these are these, and these are the set deadlines. And we're going to go to the next page. This is this is the last page. Um, property to be left in broom clean and vacant condition. Um, these are typical caveats you're going to put in an offer for a condo. All appliances and washer and dryer to be included in their and, and in their present condition. Any blinds to be included. Any pending assessments be paid in full by seller prior to closing. That's important because if there's any capital improvement assess assessments on the condominium, you want to make sure that that's put in there. Subject to review and satisfaction of condo docs and budgets by PNS signing. That's important. You want that put in there because you want to make sure that your buyer isn't buying into a money pit. If you look at the condo docs and you look at meeting minutes and you see an assessment looming that's going to be $20,000, you need to make your buyer aware of that because the last thing you want is to sell a buyer a condo and then all of a sudden, you get a phone call six or 12 months later from the buyer. He's all pissed off saying, I have this assessment. How come I never knew this and that? So you want to make sure you you uh, educate your buyer and, and just, just read through the condo docs. I mean, typically, you're not going to see too many assessments coming up in the immediate future. So you're pretty much off the hook there. But recently, I had a deal about three weeks ago in Lynn and went through the meeting minutes. Lo and behold, $25,000 assessment per unit coming up for windows, balcony improvements and roof. Needless to say, my seller backed out because she didn't want to assume that $25,000 future assessment. Seller was only willing to pay $10,000, and long story short, the deal fell through. So be mindful of that. Paragraph 9 are just disclosures about lead paint, um, acknowledgments about the no warranties, none of that stuff. And then right here, you have the buyer's signature, and you have the date right here. So you have the buyer sign there, or buyer sign right there, put the date in, and um, that's pretty much it for uh, for an offer. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Ken Solano, broker owner, turnkey realty, 
3992. There are other documents um, that need to be submitted with the offer, but I will do that in a separate video. Thanks a lot and make it a great day.